What's going on, everybody? It's the Uncanny Omar with Peter Tomasi. It's been a few years. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, Omar. How are you doing? Good. You, you look like a superstar. Man. Uh, these are called the let's hide our tired eyeglasses. I need a pair of those. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't want the poor audience to see my exhausted bags under my eyes. And it's exhausted because you're constantly riding things, right? You yeah. never stop. I, I don't seem to stop, but you know what? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I don't mind that. Okay, so let's go back a, a little bit in time. The last time I interviewed you was probably 2016, oh, 2017. It's been a while. Here's the thing, Peter. Back then you were like, we're going to get Green Lantern Corps Optimus one day. <laughs> Dude, how does it feel? It's finally not only in the catalog, it's solicited. Yeah, what is it, six years later since we spoke about it? Uh, yeah, it was uh, much to DC's, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, I guess I, I really pressed for a long time to get core collected and get it collected in the right way. I think people are, are going to be really happy with the, the book because i got to say, the omnibuses that they've been doing um, have been really, really beautifully designed. Uh, my Superman and the Batman and Robin omnibus um, look great. Uh, the core stuff that I've seen looks great. I mean, we've got stories, too, because um, any, of, any of the fans know in the core, you know, we had a big Mongol story in there. Yeah. Um, but that Mongol story started way back in 95, where I did a two-part showcase story that I actually drew from, because in that story, Mongol had the two babies in that story that ended up playing a part later on, because Mongol ended up being killed in Underworld. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> So anyway, so DC was great for allowing me to really collect some obscure stuff that actually was paying off 20-some-odd years later in the book. So it's a really uh, big collection of a, like having a, a monstrosity of a massive, massive story. All in, actually, it all in two volumes because there's going to be two volumes. All right, so let's, let's talk about this. Now, you and I are fans of collected editions. You can't shy away from it. I've seen your collection. We've talked about it before. So I have to ask, as a guy with a completist mentality like I am, and a lot of collectors are, when I saw the solicits of Green Lantern Corps, I was so happy. And then they skipped issues four, five, and six, which are done by, I believe, Dave Gibbons, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Not, not you. So how much say would you have in to tell the collected editions department, hey, it's okay to add those there? Uh, something like that comes up because, believe it or not, there's signature page, like in terms of how many issues can exist inside an act. The, this thing's packed. I mean, there's a ton of supplementary material. So the way they looked at it was like, do these core stories fit into the big mythology of what we're going to be doing? And so they decided it wasn't. So they, they pulled them out. And then I said, oh, hey, what happened to these, these stories? And they were like, well, blah, 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 based on the signature um, slips in the, in, the, in the books themselves and in terms of the story that we felt it was a good to sort of jettison it right now. So I said, all right. Okay, okay. I get it. But I need to remind people that uh, Squirrel Girl has 1,660 pages, Peter. Come on. That's true. That's true. I mean, I, who knows? I don't know what the price point is, and I don't know what. I'm not sure. I'm not. Look, I don't. All I know is I'm just behind the scenes. I'm not the guy putting the book together. I pushed hard for it, got it. And all I know is that I was very happy that everything is in there that needs to be in there to enjoy all the stories that we're building on in there. So, okay. I, for one, I, I'm happy it's coming. Yes, those, those three issues are not, they're not crucial to me not getting it, or I'm sure many of my viewers not getting it. Uh, so you said they're, they're, they mapped it out to Volume 2. Yeah. So do you have any idea what would be collected in Volume 2? I do. You do? Okay. <laughs> What's collected in Volume 2? A lot of stuff. <laughs> Good answer. Nice. Anything else? You know what I want to see? What? And this, is, this was teased. This was in the catalog, but it never made it to solicits. Oh. But a Black Adam Deluxe Edition. You know I'm talking about the Dark Age. No, I was, I was actually pretty upset that we didn't have a Deluxe Edition. I thought... Uh, the art by Doug Monkey and, and the inks, Christian Alame and the, and the coloring. It was a really beautiful looking series, mini series, and uh, six issues back in the day, long before the Black Adam movie. And I would have really liked to have seen a deluxe edition on that. And uh, yeah, I don't know why. I think they were worried about price points. So I think, you know, sometimes they wonder will people pay the extra money? Will they move more issues, more copies of the trade if it's cheaper? So they did what they did. 
and that's that's you know what can, what can you do? It's never too late. I mean, we've seen recent solicits, or actually, we've had a recent uh, Adam Strange deluxe edition. Yeah, yeah. Anything's possible. That's true, but I I mean, based on what the movie did and the perception of the film, I have a feeling that we're not going to see one. So if anybody has their editions, I would hold on to those. We don't have an Adam Strange movie, though, so anything's still possible, right? Boy, you are an optimist, aren't you? Okay. I, I try to be. I have to be. That yeah. We're also getting a Batman by Peter Tomasi Omnibus. So you've had, man, let me tell you, the design on those Omnis are amazing. Yeah. The Superman by Peter Tomasi, the Batman and Robin by Peter Tomasi, they go just hand in hand, even in the design of the, the, yeah. the spines yeah. and everything. Patrick Gleason uh, did both those covers, and, uh, and obviously those two books are big heavy on me and Pat um, working on it together. So, uh, yeah, they, they look great. And uh, we were hoping to have a, um, speaking out of school a little bit, we were actually hoping to have a third. Pat wanted to do, and he had a nice couple sketches for the Green Lantern Corps omnibuses. Uh, unfortunately, um, Marvel uh, and his exclusive would not allow him to uh, to move ahead on it. So uh, Marvel? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Usually everybody's been great about letting people like do a cover here and a cover there for the opposite companies. But uh, yeah, they 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 just said you know, no dice on that. So anyway, but we he had, we had a nice cover from a while back. So uh, they're using that one. So um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah the omnibuses are really well designed. Um, you know I don't know. Here's a here's a shot. Here's a little here's a little surprise for you guys for the. All right, let's look at this surprise. So and there was on there was one issue that was missing from there too. It was oh a Tom God. Taylor issue. I'm, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm still gonna keep talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> it still says Peter Tomasi on it, which is great. Uh, oh wow, uh, uh, that's the uh, Detective Omnibus cover. Yeah, by Doug Monkey and uh, him, uh, Jamie Mendoza, and it's gonna be colored by Dave Barron. But that's the uh, that's the new cover for the Omnibus coming out. So, for you're getting the first look right there. Oh man, that's awesome. It's so easy to be like, okay, let's look at the back catalog. Let's put those books in Omni format. Do you ever think about, like, the future? Like, am I going to be writing for Omni format or am I just going to be writing for it? No, no I, I never think of it that way. I, I mean, even Detective Comics, all of a sudden, it was literally, I, I was looking at the books and I was organizing my trades and I'm suddenly thinking, wow, I mean, there's like almost 50 issues of Detective Comics here of with the annuals and everything. I was like... Why not ask for an omnibus? So, because look, I mean, I know they sell well. I mean, the Super Sons omnibus sells well. Oh, actually, all the omnibuses sell well. Super Sons is coming back to print. Yeah. Third time around, expanded edition. I just spoke to them the other day asking to try make sure they, they didn't say, is it, it says it say expanded? Okay. So here's the thing. So we've had Super Sons omnibus went out of print. When they reprinted it, they brought it back as Super Sons expanded. That's right. We were crossing our fingers. Us nerds oh, were okay. like, Maybe the next one will be Super Sons Expanded, Expanded I hope, Edition. I, I hope so. I actually sent them an email the other day asking them to include Challenge of the Super Sons, which is my last work on the, on the boys. So I'm hoping they, uh, they include that because, it's look, it's a great selling tool to move the copies and to get people, one, who have already have the original one or two of the other ones, and then any new readers like saying, okay, great, here it is. It's all here in one big omnibus. So I'm hoping they go and they, uh, they include that Challenge of the Super Sons stuff. And some of us are crazy enough to triple dip. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, I've had, I've signed some people coming having two editions. It's, it's look, it's pretty great. I mean, and those Super Sons. Oh, look again, the omnibuses are really well designed. They they're really beautiful looking books. And and then you know, look, my wife is very happy because all the all these books can now be boiled down to just several volumes. I don't, you know, so there doesn't have to be a, right. Now it'll just be a couple of big omnibuses, and that's it. Awesome. Man, man I am just so happy to see you, because I, I know you're a guy that's all, you know, you love the big collected edition format. So I was really happy to see these officially solicited and now in the catalog, too. And, yeah, one day maybe, you know, a Black Adam. So what, what are you working on these days? Uh, I'm working on a book uh, coming out right now from Image. Uh, third issue is about to come out. It's called Blood Tree. Um, it's a non-superhero book. It's a real hard-boiled um, detective crime thriller. Uh, think Seven meets Silence of the Lambs. Um, been getting a lot of nice buzz, um, but it's uh, a lot of fun to work on. 
Uh, the artist Maxim Simic is doing a really nice job. And uh, so that's what's coming out now. Um, working on a book called Snipe and Slug um, that was first announced a little while ago, but we ended up, um, we never solicited it, but it's with uh, Brad Walker. Who's, oh, yeah. And Brad Anderson is doing the color. And it's, to say it's phenomenal, and, I, and I, if this wasn't my book, I'd be saying it, it's some of the most amazing stuff you'll ever see. Brad Walker is just killing it. He's doing amazing work on this book. And uh, I think we, we've got now three issues in the can out of six. Um, I think people are going to be really uh, bowled over when they see it, when it, when it gets when it gets out to the stands. And um, and there's, of course, my other stuff, creator own like Light Brigade, uh, The Bridge, The Mighty, House of Penance. Um, so there's a bunch. There's a bunch of I, I'm, I'm, building, I'm building up a nice uh, bunch of creator own books as a backlist, which is really nice. You know, stuff that's all non superhero when you look at it, pretty much, except for The Mighty. Um, you know, working for DC for 30th. 31 years now um you know it's uh it's been one of those things where i love superheroes but it is nice to kind of stretch other muscles and and work on other things so i'm really happy with uh with with uh the projects that i've got lined up so i i have to ask this um because you've worked at dc for so long how different is it when it comes to things that are creator own like, are you in control of what gets collected? Like, you know I'm going to ask about collected editions here. All right, so would you be the one that's in control, especially at Image, because Image is a different beast than a lot of other publishers. Would you be the one that says, okay, look, we're going trade paperback, then when it's all said and done, I want to have a deluxe hardcover edition, or does that depend on, like, the sales of the trades or single issues? I think these days everything depends on sales. I mean, um, House of Penance, I don't know if you saw that, but... House of Penance was put out as a trade um, from Dark Horse, mm -hmm. and uh, it did well and was received. We were um, we were nominated for best book at the Angulum Festival uh, several years ago, and uh, it's it was, it was the Dark Horse did a beautiful oversized edition of it. The art by Ian Bertram and then the coloring by Dave Stewart. I mean, that's a, if you got, if people could find that edition, they should they should snatch it up because it's a beautiful beautiful. Um, representation of the art and the story and that stuff. So, yeah, no, I mean, look, it's uh, anything that can be done to collect stuff in, in nice, in nice archival editions where there's even more supplementary material, so fans can see behind the scenes what was all the designs and the hard work moving, you know, you know, leading up to the project coming out. It's uh, as a as a fan, I love to see that stuff. I mean, I love the Brubaker stuff. With Sean Phillips, I mean those things are great. Yeah. Uh, seeing all that, you know, behind the scenes stuff. So yeah, no, I'm I'm a big fan of that, and I I hope uh, more places do it. And you know, with Blood Tree, I know we're I think we're already solicited as a trade at some point um, through Image, and uh, you know we had first come out digitally by Zest World, and um, so Image, you know, loved the book, and so they decided they would take it out and go as a floppy, sort of the exact thing that you know. The comicology and, and um, with Snyder, yeah, the yeah. Dark Horse thing. So, yeah. So, a as a fan of these things that you're mentioning, when do you have time to read if you're writing all this stuff, man? Uh, well, as I tell young writers and people who ask me about, you know, writing professionally, I, I, I really, I try to, look, I'm, I'm reading a magazine here. <laughs> uh, I, I read every day. I read all the time. Um, you can't feed your writing soul and you're writing imagination unless you're reading, and not just comics. You have to read, like I tell everybody, you have to read fiction, nonfiction, uh, anything you can get to. The daily papers, if, if, you're, if you can't find a story in the daily paper that you can you know, sort of riff off of and add and make a story of, then you're not doing your job. You, could, you should be able to make a story of at least one story, be it from the Times, the Journal, Daily News, the Post. I mean, obviously I'm coming from a New York yeah. Point, of, point of view here, but uh, it's uh, it's all around, and you just gotta you just gotta embrace it and look for it, and and, and uh, not just stay in comics because there are they are telling stories there already. Go look elsewhere to find stories that you can put into a graphic novel form, like like the building of the Brooklyn Bridge. You know, it's you can do anything. Comics are amazing. There's no budget. You can tell any story that you want in comics, and it's a uh, it's a format and it's an art form that I love and. Uh, I hope uh, you know people will keep uh, cherishing it and picking up their big omnibuses and trades and collections because also the key too is 
I think audiences today, it's hard to pick up an issue a month. I think, you know, you really want to have stuff, one, at least one full story in a collection so people can get a beginning, middle, and an end. They want, a, they want a, an experience of uh, reading something in complete form and not, and then, oh, cliffhanger time, and uh, wait another year or two for another. It's crazy. So you want to, uh, you want to, you want to craft certain stories for certain formats. So that's right. Read every day. <laughs> that, that's the key. Every day. That's the key. All right. I always ask every writer that I interview this question, and some I, I love this answer because it varies. So, this, what's the best thing that Peter Tomasi has written? Uh, it's, that just, that's like asking you know who your favorite child is. Lydia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Alicia. I love you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, it's tough. I mean, honestly, everything. Somebody's asked me that a couple of times in the last last you know, in Toronto last week at a at a panel. Um, the book that I'm writing always seems to be the one that I'm really in love with at the moment. It's and I, look, and I've been really lucky. So, all the projects that I've worked on and all the characters I've worked on are all passion projects and characters that I actually love doing. So I haven't yet written a character that I that I took just to make money or to hack out just to make a buck. Everything I've done is something I'm passionate about, and I pour 110 percent into my into my into my energy into. And uh, yeah, no, it's. Uh, they're all they're all favorites. Awesome, dude! Thank you so much for your time. You're I can't wait to see your name in more collected editions. But first, you got to write you. the comic. Right, thank you, thank you. So, thank you so much. Thank, and look, and thanks for promoting. You know, the, all the collections. It's great. I mean, we need we need people ringing the bell out there. So. Oh, I try. I try. I do. And I'm gonna get them all to buy that Green Lantern yeah. Corps, man. All right. Thank you.